Isaac Robinson was robbed. I'll be the first to say it. I'm Jefferson from the Disc Golf World on day 21 of Discmas, this time breaking down Isaac Robinson's 2023 Disc Golf season and how he shocked the Disc Golf community and rightfully deserved Player of the Year, but we'll get there in a second. Isaac would first start touring in 2021 where he would play a rocky rookie season, at points even saying he wanted to quit. Good thing he didn't because he was able to snag a win at Idlewild in 2022 and have plenty of other great finishes including a second at the Tour Championship. Looking good, he would take on the road for his first time officially on a full tour in 2023. He would start his season with the worst way possible with a casual 82nd place at the Las Vegas Challenge. Yeah, not the start you'd expect from the season he was able to put up. He improved the next week, granted it wasn't that hard as he still finished in 45th place, nowhere near where he wanted to be, following up those poor finishes with a couple more, a 25th at the Open at Austin and a 52nd at the end of an Open. Isaac would manage his first top 10 of the year, finishing in 9th place at the Music City Open, taking that newfound confidence into the Blue Red Championship, a Silver Series where he would take 5th. It was no surprise to people who were already Isaac Robinson fans that he was a good Woods disc golfer. That would explain the weak finishes at the start of the year, because that's not his style. When you think Isaac Robinson, what do you think? If it's not tightly wooded mid-range shots, I don't know what you're thinking, because that's his bread and butter. When looking at the past two events, it should be no shock that Isaac started performing better at tournaments like the Music City Open and Blue Ridge. The next event would be the first major of the season, Champions Cup, in Isaac Robinson's home state of Georgia at W.R. Jackson. He would start off with a hot round and be in the lead. Heading into day two, he would shoot another 11 down, still with the stroke lead over second place. Isaac would go on to shoot his best in round three with a 12 down, which would put him seven strokes ahead of second place with only one round to go. At this point, everyone knew Isaac was doing something special. He would play the worst round of his tournament on the final day, but still managed a five-stroke victory. After the worst start imaginable, Isaac was able to snatch a major championship, and not only that, dominate on one of the hardest courses on tour. This would kick off Isaac's season as he would take second at the next event at the Jonesboro Open, only to follow that up with a third at the OTB Open, and a fourth at the Portland Open until his podium streak would end at the DDO. I guess Isaac can only play with trees. He would bounce back with another second at the shortened Des Moines Challenge, followed by a disappointing 31st at the Preserve Championship. He would then head overseas to play in the European Open, taking 12th place, only to come back to the States with a 15th at Ledgestone. Isaac would go into Idlewild as the defending champion. Although he wasn't able to defend, he was still able to finish on the podium. Carrying that momentum to the first playoff of at Deglo, he would take another top 10, this time a 7th place, heading now into the World Championships. Round 1, they played Brewster Ridge, where Isaac would find himself 3 back of the lead after shooting a 9 down. After an okay round 2 with a couple of bumps, he would slip down the leaderboard, still 3 strokes off the lead, and now in 9th place. Back over to Brewster, Isaac would bounce back with a 9 down, getting a stroke back on the leader, now only 2 strokes away from 1st, with 2 rounds still to play. Round 4, he figured out Fox Run and shot a 12 down that would give him a 3 stroke lead going into the final day. Isaac has been in this position already this season, and instead of shooting the worst round like he before, he played a consistent 10 down final round that would secure his second major of the season and first world championships of his career by two strokes. The last MPO player to do this was in 2019 when Macbeth won Worlds and USTGC. Also, everyone else on the list of double majors will find themselves in the Hall of Fame. Securing a second major shocked the disc golf community, even questioning if he should be player of the year after these two wins, over Calvin Heimberg, whose average place was a podium finish. If we're talking about someone's entire season, that should prove Heimberg is the winner. But what Isaac was able to do was so insane, he had nearly half the MPO players thinking he deserved player of the year. And if they didn't want to admit it, I'd be willing to bet nearly every single player would rather have Isaac's year over Calvin's. And I'm including Heimberg himself, who has already gone on record saying the same thing. I mean, think about it. Our sport revolves around two things, the world championship and second, majors. Only 17 professional disc golfers have won two or more majors in their career, and both of Isaac Robinson's majors were harder than damn near every single one of the other ones. Sure, comment about some crazy battle Climo had, but Isaac played in the deepest field with a collection of the best disc golfers of all time. But for some reason, I still have to compare that to Eagles 2018 Kona Piste Open Major win that only 15 people a thousand rated or higher was playing in, because that makes sense. Isaac is still young and his game is evolving. I don't think we've seen the final stage of Isaac Robinson yet. He takes no weekends off, however, as he played a tournament the week after winning Worlds, and he would lose in a playoff to Eagle McMahon. I wonder if he would have won that if he would be player of the year. 
He would take another poor finish at the OTB Open, but the wins were too strong, so I'll excuse the 30th place. The last major of the season, USDGC. After round two, Isaac found himself in 33rd place, but after shooting a six down on a windy day, he shot up 20 spots in 13th place with one more round to go. Isaac must have figured out Winthrop because the next day he would shoot the hot round by two strokes and now would be in third place. Wrapping up his season at the Tour Championship, he would easily find his way into the finals. After two solid rounds of Woods disc golf, he would take a fourth place to end his DGPT season. But that didn't mean he was done playing disc golf. I told you, the dude is a grinder. He would go over to Spain to play in the EPT All-Stars where he would take fourth place, some world champion. Isaac played a historic season that will be remembered forever by disc golfers. I don't think we can say the same about Calvin Heimberg. I could be wrong, however. But the way I look at it is Isaac was able to accomplish something that less than 1% of professionals of all time were able to do. And the argument that I have to accept is Calvin almost won a few events, but he always fought hard to the very end. Seems weird to give an award to someone who didn't win more accolades than, you know, the reason they play. I understand that playing well should be rewarded, but that's what the money's for. I'm of the mindset that majors are what is valued the most. The pros, even when talking about the greatest of all time, the first conversation piece is worlds, then majors. If that is what is determined as the best, how can we not acknowledge what Isaac accomplished? For those going to throw the argument player of the year is supposed to represent play throughout the entire season, all I ask is, where does it say that? Unless players were given some sort of different criteria, I didn't see any guidelines when voting. It was as open as could be, and I truly believe winning two majors makes Isaac's entire year better than Calvin's. Well, good thing my opinion doesn't matter, and Calvin was voted player of the year. But that's not going to stop some of you fans from flaming me in the comments below. If you're down there, might as well hit subscribe. The other thing that most of you probably know about Isaac is he not only was making a name for himself by winning, but also as a prominent guest of Alden's vlogs. Isaac is often described as someone who has no personality, but through these videos, people were able to see a different side of him that we'd never be able to get otherwise. I always thought it was weird that he was considered boring, but I think it's just because he takes the safe lines and does it well. He doesn't need to be flashy, he plays quick so if you're not locked in, you can miss him, and when he does something incredible, he walks it off like it's nothing, which I respect. I'll always be a bigger fan of the cool guys not looking at explosion vibes over middle school cheerleaders any day. He plays his game well, and his game just happens to be tightly wooded disc golf that forces specific shots. That's why he excels at courses like WR Jackson, Northwood, or anything with 10 million trees. And once you let him decide the lines and have OB everywhere, he folds. Look at DDO, for example. When talking about player of the year, I don't personally like talking about the entire season, because I believe in regional disc golf. Some disc golfers play better on the East Coast in the woods, and others do better in the more open Midwest. Isaac shouldn't be punished for not being able to keep up with others who specialize in those types of courses. If you want to bring up why that makes Calvin even more impressive, I see you. But I would say Gannon Burr was better because at least he proved to me that he could win at these different style of courses. I don't know. To me, winning will always be rewarded over consistency. The best part is this topic can be debated forever. And it's going to be funny for everyone who hasn't gotten this far in the video because they're going to be confused when on Saturday, I'm arguing Calvin Heimberg for being player of the year to wrap up the 2023 player profiles. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to not miss out on the last few videos of Dismiss. And if you want to know all of the disco drama, make sure to check out the video right here.